This week we don't have one lick of the week, but we have five. These are relatively short, so let's quickly go through them all. This first one is... This reminds me of something Eric Mariental and Bob Burke did, like uh, Eric Mariental's solo on Ish It. And uh, Bob Burke's intro solo on Chromosome, the live version. This. Especially this one. With Eric Mariental, they play it on uh, Dominant Sharp 9. So. So you literally have the major third and the minor minor third. And then just the dominant arpeggio. Root, fifth, and flat seven. So this reminds me of that. The chord says E major seven flat five, but it's it's more the line is being played over a moment where the chord has sort of almost completely died out. So what, what this outlines is actually more of a an augmented G major seven. So G major seven sharp five. Or B major with a flat 13. And then this B flat sharp nine ish. There's no flat seven, but major third flat third or minor third of the B flat and then resolving to the E and this is also the minor third of B so the pivot notes are each time half step away so very powerful connection minor second very nice pentatonic kind of thing or sus sound you could see it as f sharp minor uh, f sharp minor pentatonic it's a relative minor of a major pentatonic anyway that's the first line So we're in D minor. He starts off in a pretty standard approach to just D minor pentatonic, but instead of using the five, he uses the flat five. And then skips up to the roots, giving this parallel fingering, which is something Alan used quite often, resolving into the major third of A major, and then this is from uh, B flat melodic minor, giving the major third, flat third, flat nine, and then the roots, and then he proceeds in playing like the, the bebop scale, the bebop dominant scale, with this added half step between the root and a flat seven. And this alternate fingering for the F sharp. And then just going down the scale. And 
and then just ending. This is cool. All of a sudden you have these wide octave and tens, tenths intervals. Which is a very nice contrast to this very narrow uh, chromatic way of playing. Obviously we have this jump in the beginning as well. So you put all of that together and you get this very interesting line. Move it on. We are in C minor 6. Starts off very interesting. It's actually the end of a separate line, but here's where like C minor starts. So we have the fifth root and then the 13 or the six. 9 and back to the 5th, so this is all in 4ths, that's a perfect 4th and then and then this line so what this sounds like is you have this C minor 9 9, flat 3rd, 5th, 9, going to the sharp 11, and then that's also an, an, another option, but the other fingering flows a little bit better, and by doing this, it sounds like this has become the root, so it sounds like he modulated to A. Which is sort of an anticipation of D minor. It's almost like a 5-1 resolution. Because that ends on D minor 6-9. That's the root, so that's also something you hear a lot in Alan's lines. Like he establishes the sound and then he shifts it like half a step down or... So that creates like this falling down effect. And I really like that sound, so. You could also see this as modulating to, again, F sharp minor, which is the relative minor of A major. So that would be C minor and F sharp minor, so like a triad pair of sorts. I think that's maybe the, the most logical reasoning for this line, but I don't think he, he did this kind of fingering, it doesn't flow at all. So that's that. And then we have this one. I have eight strings so I can play it like he played it or like it sounds. And this is again, this falls after a chord has died out again, so it's kind of left on its own. And it's an F major 7 augmented, kind of an arpeggio. It's actually taken from the F augmented scale, which is the same as A augmented and C sharp augmented. That's the notes that are in there. F, A flat or G sharp, A, C, C sharp or D flat, E and F. And those are exactly the notes that are in this arpeggio. This would be the sharp 5 and F. Major 7, root, major 3rd, regular, regular 5, sharp 5, 
and then we have root, flat third, major third, sharp five, major seven, root, major third, fifth, sharp five, root, flat third, and then the third but we have arrived on A major nine, so this would be our new root. If you don't have eight strings, you can just play this version I wrote out. So you have to put this in another octave. Oops. And this is a very good example and lesson in tension and release because it's a very, well, tensionful sound. I, I love major seven sharp five. I really love that sound, but it has more of an alien sound. So when he arrives at that A, it really has this sound of a revelation and supreme, I don't know, whatever. So take note of that tension and release, very important concepts. And then the final one, I would argue that Alan plays a lot inside. And why do I say that? Because if he's playing a line that sounds weird, the chord over which he is playing it also sounds weird. He really outlines for the most part, like nine times out of 10 of the transcriptions I've done, he's really outlining that chord he is playing over. So E major seven sharp five. your one two three and E major and that's your sharp five major seven and then here he resolves into G sharp minor pentatonic and then this nine which resolves into this A natural, but it's over another chord, blah, blah, blah. So he's really playing what the chord says. And this is another example of this uh, symmetrical fingering thing that occurs quite a lot. And that's another argument for putting in taps. Some people don't like it. In my opinion, like with Ellen Holdsworth, the fingering is so crucial for his lines and just having the notes. Sure, if you, if you don't play guitar, tablature doesn't benefit you anyway, but as a guitar player, being able to see the fingering, obviously I have to use my, my best judgment to come up with these fingerings. It's a little easier if I have live footage so I can see where he's playing what, but the fingering is just a huge part of Alan's style and how we came up with these sort of lines. Even though they, they can be blistering fast, they do have a certain flow in them and they lay well underneath your fingers and you can kind of feel when you've hit the right fingering because that's the only way you could, you could get these lines out of your fingers at that speed. So anyway, it's a little bit beside the point. So that's it for the licks. I hope I was a little bit clear. I hope this was a nice Christmas present likes, comments, subscribes, Patreon, blah, blah, blah. Happy holidays, enjoy the end of the year, and I will see you guys in 2020.